Welcome to your new favorite band, the podcast brought to you by the LA Maybe. And now, your hosts, Dallas Dwight and Drizzle Hey Silvera. everybody, it's Drizzle here and you're watching your new favorite band, uh, brought to you by the LA Maybe. And right next to me, well, across from this table, we have Dallas Dwight. That's me. How's it going, everybody? We are here once again. For another episode of your new favorite band this is episode 11 i believe yes this is 11 <sighs> except for our special episodes for our paid members the bonus episodes for the paid members yeah if you go to lamaybe.com slash vip you can sign up for that a lot of cool perks it's only seven dollars a month uh the most amazing perk of all is you help support this whole thing here so if you like the band that's a really good way to uh show a little love for what we're doing here and we certainly appreciate it Definitely. Thanks to everyone who does subscribe. We love you and we really appreciate your financial contributions and we hope you really enjoy the uh, the extra perks you get uh, from the podcast as well. Yeah, sure. We'll probably work in some, you know, it's been tough lately just for shows and stuff, but once those start rolling in a little more, which they are, we just haven't announced all of them yet. Uh, we could probably certainly work out some like, you know, VIP slots for VIP members, you know, get in free, you know, get on the list, all that kind of stuff. Oh think, yeah, that'd yeah, be great. I think that'd be a really good option. So if you're a VIP member, look out for that. You're going to be getting some extra perks as, as we go along. Uh, and you don't have to change anything you're doing. We're going to do this uh, like good boys. So today, we called the podcast Your New Favorite Band, uh, which is a little tongue-in-cheek. Uh, we obviously... Where is it here? No. Oh, there it is. I found it. We. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh. We want to be your new favorite band. The LA Maybe. Uh, but also... We want to turn you on to a lot of bands that could potentially be your new favorite band. Those are a lot of bands that we consider our peers that are also kind of a part of this rock movement that's happening right now that we've all seen. Um, There's so many of them, and uh, we're going to name, you know, we're, we're going to probably focus on, you know, one or two every episode and, and talk about them and stuff and go from there. A lot of the podcast is going to be us just hanging out and talking. Like, oh, yeah. Like any podcast Like any is. podcast, yeah. yeah. But uh, today, we wanted to focus on... Uh, yeah, just that. Just the rock genre. What's happening with it? What's been going on lately? Uh, where it's been, where it's going, where it is now. You know, where do we fit into this whole equation as well? Your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. I watched a video recently uh, by Rick Beato. Uh, for you, uh, those of you who don't I know. I love he, Rick. Yeah, he has an awesome YouTube channel, so go check that out. Subscribe like all his stuff. He really does a great job and uh, he seems like a really cool guy. I haven't met him personally. He's a very uh, cool guy. Yeah, you have Dallas. I recorded yeah. an album with him, yes. Um, yeah. That was the, uh, with my old band, that was the, we were there for New Year's, I think between 2013 and 14 and it was a really fun experience. Um, what I loved about Rick is, is he was, he was really into busting balls the same way we were. Like, the entire, like, week we were there, it was just constant, like, making fun of each other and he was fine with us making fun of him and then he'd make fun of us and like that's was, awesome that's <laughs> we awesome. had so much fun there was he has uh, an engineer that works with him named gl amazing guy love him as well a phenomenal engineer as well and uh at one point rick and, and gl are sitting there gl's man in the computer rick's standing next to him when i'm doing you know solos or riffs or something and rick just kind of leans over to gl and goes like um we're definitely going to retrack all this right <laughs> <laughs> just like as a joke <laughs> That's great. Oh, uh, we all had a good laugh. Oh, it dude. was that kind of humor. The humor that we all have and like. Yeah, the ball, but just, just, he was ball right busting. there with it. Just yeah. like, uh, he get he used to get, um, uh, really touchy when he felt like someone was like producing over his shoulder, you know? So we would, we would lean into that so hard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we would be like, just start throwing out, like, I think we should maybe double this chorus. You know, I don't, I don't like what Rick said. Maybe we should, <laughs> he would just be like, <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so fun, dude. Oh, that was man. a really good time. Now, this is before he had his YouTube channel or anything. And uh, it's been really cool to see him kind of develop that. Now, the Rick you guys see on, on YouTube doesn't look anything like the Rick that we worked with. The Rick we worked with, long black hair, the biggest, thickest black beard you've ever seen. He puts Goliath's beard to shame. Like, oh, my dude, goodness. He's 100% Sicilian, so Rick can grow like the thickest mountain man beard in like two weeks. Like, dude, it's like this big. Like, it's that's insane. Outrageous. So that's the Rick we worked with. Now he's got the short, you know, his hair's graying and, and no, he's kind of more clean shaven. Looks like a completely different person, but uh, yeah, man, that was, a, that was a good time. I'm glad you brought up Rick, but tell me about this video that he did. Yeah, so he did a video and he was, uh, he was talking about how on Spotify and different streaming platforms, particularly the Spotify, I think was, was the num were the numbers he was quoting, but how old music and old rock is just destroying all genres. 
and Interesting. like like Queen and like all, oh yeah yeah like when you look at the streams and, and you know it, did he pull up like actual analytics and share yeah yeah stuff? the yeah. analytics yeah I'd like to see that as well I'm and not questioning so, it I just genuinely don't know and I saw something else too which was kind of like and it's cool and it's awesome that they're still around and, and doing stuff but like bands that haven't broken up or haven't lost all their members I think they're are called s- legacy bands are still out touring is that what you call them I think yeah like so legacy, legacy bands legacy stuff band. like that or nostalgic acts I've, nostalgia acts I've heard that as yeah well. um you know and then even great rock acts that have been you know around you know if can you name any what what comes to mind uh i mean when i think nostalgia act i think like you know poison kiss guns and roses is definitely doing their thing um uh who are some other ones that are out there you have your queen you know of course yeah of course you have adam lambert now uh, who kills it by the way um other legacy acts legacy i don't know if i don't know if those are interchangeable boston's terms. pretty much done at this point right um <clears throat> or they still do they're not done but they don't tour so much no yeah Gotcha. Um, but again, like a lot, a lot of these bands, you know, obviously Van Halen's not doing anything. True. Right. That's uh, so pretty much done. <laughs> but, um, but you have that legacy being carried on through, through Wolfie, through, through his own Wolfie, stuff. through his own stuff, which is great also. And that's another band in, in our genre that everyone should be knowing about. Definitely. Wolfgang WVH. Uh, Mammoth WVH. Mammoth WVH. Yeah. I, small, you know, it's late at night. <laughs> He plays the Wolfgang guitars, though. He does. Yeah, the music's actually really, really and, solid. And the, the Gibson, he loves those 335. Yeah, he and, does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that he has kind of gone his own way with his own sound. Yeah. And uh, if you listen to the album, their first album, his first album, he plays all the instruments on it. I assume he wrote everything. So, Dude, really good stuff. driving choruses. If you love drive, just, yeah. man. He's got a really good handle on that, like, kind of alter bridge. Maybe yeah. a little, not as heavy as alter bridge, that kind of sound. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of just good rock. Yeah, I wouldn't good call rock. it classic rock. No, definitely not. It's definitely modern rock, but it's not. I don't say that in a bad way. It's not like what I would call tribal tattoo rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so go, I mean, ACDC is still out touring. You know, um, maybe not True. not like they we used to, but they still go out. You know, Guns right. N' Roses. We mentioned them. They're still They've out been touring the road for since 2017. Yeah. Um, and they're raking in, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars around the world, yep. all these acts. And so again, you know, they're not gone yet and people, and because they're destroying on streaming platforms, just like getting insane mm-hmm. numbers. Like the only things that like surpass them are like the world's biggest pop stars. Right. Your and Taylor and, Swift's and, 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 yeah. and if, if I remember correctly from the video, not by insane amounts, you know, by respectable right. amounts, but like not by insane not amounts. Not like what you would think. Yeah. I wonder what's, and we can only speculate here, I wonder what's changed and why that's happening. Or has it always kind of been, you know, your big rock act queen has always been, you know, billions Well, of maybe one thing that, that caused it to change is, is you can listen to what you want to listen to when you want to. With, and, with streaming, and, yeah, and then another streaming, thing yeah. is a lot of these rock groups, you know, maybe don't have stuff on the radio all the time, you know? That's interesting. When you think about streaming, it feels like it's always been a thing, but it hasn't been around that long. I remember I got Apple Music right after it came out. I still have it. Right after it came out, like as soon as it was available, I signed up. And uh, that was 2015 because I remember like where I was living and what I was doing when I signed up. And that was 2015, like middle of 2015, summer-ish. So, um, and maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, that hadn't been around that long. Yeah. That's what, seven years? Oh, I just thought another one. Genesis. Spotify's been around a little longer. Genesis, yeah, and, Genesis and Phil Collins, you know, yeah. he's not able to do much, you know, really uh, with his Eagles, state. they're still, yeah. uh, Chris, our, our manager Chris just went and saw them the other night. Yeah. Like, well, one week ago. So again, these bands are still out there tearing up the market, you know, and doing a good job of it. So, yeah. you know, and, and it, it's not going to be that way f- <laughs> I don't think it'll be that way for much longer. So it just like keeps carrying on new members until nobody's from that band's in there, but it's still going and it's still like, yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting thought. I brought this up. So I had to do a lot of press and inter- a lot of uh, press interviews for dirty damn tricks. And so I had a lot of time to think and kind of develop some thoughts about this. And I, sh- I shared it with a lot of the interviewers and I'd like to share it with you and see what you think. But um, <clears throat> in maybe, I don't know, five to 10 years, most of the rock stars we know and love will be gone. If we think about like um, any, any famous old band that made you want to play guitar, they'll all be gone. 
We've, or, you know, yeah, and a lot of them are already gone. Yeah. We've already lost a lot of them. But I'm talking like, you know, we're not far away from seeing uh, the next wave. Like we're still, you know, the Led Zeppelins, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the first wave of kind of rock. Yeah. Those guys are starting to go. We're not far away from the second wave with, with your Van Halens and your Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue and all these other guys that are aging as well. Um, you know, it's not five or ten years for those guys, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, nobody wants this to happen, but it's just fact of life. So, yeah, last I checked, the mortality rate hovers right around 100%. Yeah, it's close, yeah. for sure. Um, I'll probably be the first to not, not die, but <laughs> if I had to put my money on it, uh, that would be a dumb bet. But uh, <clears throat> when they're all gone, what happens? Does rock just cease to exist, or, or does the next wave step up and, and kind of take the mantle and fill it? fill those shoes you know yeah and that's where we're positioned right now and and all of our our counterparts and colleagues uh across the board your mammoths you know that we talked about tons of other bands we're going to be talking about as well all of them yeah yeah we're we're all in a prime place to kind of take that mantle and some some have already started to take off you know not in like not in like a disrespectful like keep move out of the way old man like a respectful like you know thank you for what you've done yeah, it's, it's our time now. You yeah, know? exactly. Not in a, it's that even that sounded douchey, but not in like a you know, a respectful way. Well, I mean, like a mentor it's, it's, mentee. It's the it's the thing. passing the torch from one generation right, to the exactly. next kind of yeah exactly. So, but not in like a douchey snotty young kid. Old people suck. Not that way, you know. Yeah, like a respectful like thank you for what you've done. Yeah. Now the apprentice has become the master. Yeah, you can start <laughs> putting some weight on my shoulders. I've got yeah. I got decent legs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, I'd probably squat this week, dude. I'm ready. Like, I squat like you and five other bands. <laughs> I squat all the Rolling Stones, dude. But that's an interesting thought. Now, we have some time before many of these acts are gone. If you think about... Um, actually, it's weird, though, because we probably don't have as much time as we think. <laughs> you know who has the most time, though? Who? Mick Jagger. Uh, Keith Richards. <laughs> Keith Richards. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the meme that was like... Um, Keith Richards' grandchildren need to really start worrying about what kind of world they're going to leave for Keith Richards. <laughs> the guy oh, won't, that's amazing. That's, he's the guy making the mortality rate right around 99.9%. <laughs> yeah, right? God's just like, dude, what do I got to do? Like, <laughs> as far as I understand it, he still parties. Like, I don't think he ever had like a... So- I don't know a lot about it, but I don't think he ever got like fully sober or anything, did he? I mean, I feel like I still see him smoke cigarettes in his interviews. So like it's pretty nuts, dude. Yeah, That's but um, um, man, Steve Gorman, the drummer for the Black Crows, he wrote a book, an amazing book you should all read. He said he told a story about opening for the Stones, and he said uh, he said they had their like post show thing down, dude. He said they and they let the Crows kind of hang along with them for this this phase. I think it was the I think it was the Rolling Stones. It might have been a different massive band, but I'm almost positive it was the Rolling Stones. He said, they finish the set, say goodnight, walk off stage into the van. Van immediately jets them to like this. They had like a castle, like, like a castle hotel thing booked for them. And they were there within, you know, five minutes of being on stage. And like, everyone's waiting out to sign autographs. Like they're not even there, dude. Like, they, wow. They've been gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> before you stood up from your seat to try to find the exit, they're in the hotel. Like, <laughs> Holy shit. And he said they were just had that down to science, dude. That's a really good book, though. Oh, man. I love rock biographies, but that's one of the best ones I've read. Wow. Um, the passing the torch thing, though, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would, I would talk a lot about that in interviews and stuff, and I think we're kind of at the right time for that. And that feels like forever ago now. It's almost a year. But um, I don't know. What's changed? What's changed for us in a year? I feel like... It's funny, actually, this will be uh, theoretically around forever. If you're yeah, watching this, yeah, five years from now, it might be funny to look back. Oh, they didn't even know what was going to happen. Like, <laughs> but it feels like right now we might be at a, at a point of like a, uh, what's the word? A pinnacle. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Getting ready to move. At the move top in. of the hill of the roller coaster. Go to church terms. We're getting ready to move into a new season right now. Right. There you go. That's good. I like that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> apt. We, I, I, I do feel like it's about to kind of, kind of take off in a way. Bitch is looped up. <laughs> Time for penetration. Oh, here comes Batman again. Also, don't say the word penetration. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, how are you feeling about things? 
I, you know what? It's there's so much going on right now that like it's like I don't really think about all that as much as I could because there's so much to to take into account. I mean, like we're obviously coming yeah. out of COVID, you know, <laughs> and then everything costs so much and bands and you know like shows have been canceled postponed and we're finally starting to get some again and yeah you still see these national acts going like out the, you still see the national acts going out you know it seems quite like the more. covid thing is kind of kind of quickly in the rear view you know with so many other world events happening it seems like those world events have kind of overshadowed covid covid was kind of on the out anyway yeah and it seems like you know the world events are going to come in like any news cycle works yeah somebody's talking about something one day and two days later it's something new happened and they forgot all about it you know yeah but like you know i think people just want to milk that cash cow as long as they can that that you know big tours you know with these legendary bands yeah and so if they're still able to and COVID hasn't scared you know these folks off then you know they're still out there doing it you know you still see yeah them doing doing the I shows look, I, doing the things yeah that's a good point yeah the um although and I, so what do you mean like big, like when you say bands, like big bands, what are you talking about? Like, what do you think? Well, I mean. Because it's not like great white. No, you know, but you know, big like a, bands like that, that'll fill like, you know, clubs and all the way up to stadiums, arenas, okay. stuff like that, you know, yeah. like Fillmore's to, you know, stadiums. Yeah. The stadium ones are definitely tonning it. Yeah. Oh yeah. But even, you know, know even if you can ones. pack, even if you can pack a Fillmore. No, that's you're true. making really good money if you're hitting, yeah, you know, twelve hundred of you know two two thousand twenty five hundred you know seats yeah. seat venues and you're packing them out every night. Well, you're making a really good money. Yeah, one dollar a ticket. You're making about two thousand dollars a night. Yeah, that's a that's a one dollar <laughs> a ticket. You know. <laughs> yeah, these tickets are thirty five forty bucks. Exactly They're twenty minimum. You know. Yeah, and if you got a door deal, shit. Yeah, if you can, if you can. Um, <clears throat> If you can sell it, that's definitely the way to go. That's a big if. Yeah. Because there's even some big bands that aren't selling it, you know, right now. Yeah. Big-ish. Well, I mean, you know, having talked to a lot of venue owners over the, you know, the last year or so, Mm -hmm. uh, they've been having a really hard time, you know, even with... We've experienced that too. Oh, yeah. We played sold out shows that we weren't told until we like got on stage that they were COVID sold out, meaning they had cut the room's capacity by 80%. So yeah. we we're only playing to 20% of a full room and, but we sold the 20% out. So we were told it was sold out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we're like, Oh, it's going to be a sold out crowd. We peek out the window. It's like, it looks like there's 10 people there. We're like, Oh fuck dude. Like, right. Yeah. It's so like, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh it's the worst man. Yeah. But then you have to go out there and give it a hundred percent anyway. For those of you who are listening to the podcast, I took my extended finger and dropped it down like representing. It. A flaccid. Flaccidity. <laughs> that's the name of the that's, new album. That's the new t-shirt. Flaccidity. <laughs> With just your finger like this. Yeah. Flaccidity. Yeah. Hey, good job talking to the listeners. I always forget. that. Which is funny because I'm the person that never watches a podcast. I'll only listen. Yeah, and I'm the person who really only watches. Yeah. So. Should be backwards. Yeah. But, Obviously, um, I listen. Well, if I'm listening in the car, it'll be on video, but I'll have my phone away from me. Like Right. Away from you, but like you're staring at it while you're driving, like that, right? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, for for any legal reasons, I must say, allegedly, no. Uh, allegedly, not. Yes. <laughs> Just throw around the word. Allegedly. <laughs> Spell allegedly. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll spell it if you can spell flaccidity. <laughs> Well, that's a tough one too. I'm not even sure that's a real word, but I like it. It is now. It's a real word now. <laughs> Wait, we're gonna be having some uh, guests on soon. I'm excited. Yeah, about that. um, that's gonna be really fun. There's there's a chance we'll have one on next week. There is a not chance a guarantee, we'll have one on but week. there's a chance we'll have one on next week. So uh, yep. be looking out for that. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about some of these new bands that are out. Uh, oh, let's. I think the one that kicked the it. door open for me. Was Greta Van Fleet. Now, that was 2017, I think. And that did for a lot of people, too, because that's yeah. what made me go, is it? Is it? Like, I was watching, like, old people at bars getting stoked, like, right. it's not Led Zeppelin, dude, but listen. <laughs> right. True. That's a good point. Um, yeah, 2017, uh, again, because I remember, like, where I was and what I was doing 
when I was listening to that first EP that came out. I remember how I discovered him too. I was leaving the gym with my friend. He was driving and the radio was on and it was Highway Tune. Now, I didn't know this at the time. I just heard Highway Tune. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is still my favorite song by them. And I'm sitting here like, this rips, dude. This yeah. sounds awesome. And I shazammed it. And it was like Creative Van Fleet. I was like, that's a weird name. Add it. You know, add the EP, whatever. I'll listen to that later. Listen to the EP. It was four songs at the time. And I loved all four. I thought they were all good. Um, they have since re-released that EP with eight songs. And the four they added, uh, they were fine. I didn't like them as much as the original four. But um, still, awesome. Awesome stuff. And yeah, awesome the other four, thing. some of them were covers, right? I don't know. I thought they were all original, but I don't no, know. No, they're not. They definitely weren't all original. I they don't did know. at um, least eight If they cover. were covers, I don't know what they were. Yeah. Um, I was born on the river. Something like that. In little town. Nice. Damn, uh, you see, say good. It's been a long, long time coming. And I know the change is going to come. Something you know what's like funny, that, right? though? Actually, as you mentioned that, I was in the gym today. And I hear this riff just ripping on the radio. I'm in the locker room, and I hear the riff really well, like speakers right above my head. And it's like this ripping, like funky, heavy, but clearly vintage-sounding riff. I'm like, damn, that's good. That's heavy. And then then the Josh starts singing, and I'm like, oh, that's great, Van Fleet. <laughs> like, yeah, it just had yeah. that vintage sound. I was like, oh, that's good, good rock and riff. And then he started singing. I was like, oh, nice, GVF. Um, really cool stuff. But that made me think because we were just starting to build the LA maybe at that point, um, or have the idea for it. And when they kind of hit and went real big, and really quickly too. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking like, that's good for us. Because we're probably going to be doing something similar to that, sound-wise, right. you know, that vintage rock sound. And uh, if they can make it, that means we can make it. They've kind of kicked the door open for all these other people to go through. You know? Yeah. And yeah, as I say that, there's going to be 50 people in the comments. No, they're actually in 1921. Like, <laughs> you know how it is. But um, I, for me, at least, it was them. And I think for a lot of other people as well. <clears throat> yeah. No, it was definitely them for me. Um. And there were some other things that kind of came up on the ra- radar, but never quite like them. Uh, was it like Foxy Shazam was kind of like a queen. Yeah, I like- saw them live at um, the Rock 93.5 St. Patrick's Day Festival in Columbia, South Carolina, which is a, p- a pretty big deal. Yeah. Rock 93.5 doesn't exist anymore, but um, the festival still happens. And yeah, I saw them live and didn't know anything about them, but I thought they were kind of like queen-like, you know? Mm-hmm. But they've yeah, been around yeah. for a while. Queen-like that was, and that funny. Was like, and yeah. That was probably like 2012, 2011 that I saw them. But that that didn't that, that didn't scream to me the same vintage no, rock sound. No, yeah, you know? not the same. It, you know, it was kind of its own thing. Still cool, and it had a lot of vintage elements to it. Right. I'll switch the camera. A lot me. of Queen. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So uh, them. Uh. Let's see. What was another like? Uh, kind of like that. Like vintage pop, like or vintage punk type sound was like the Struts. I remember listening to some of the Struts okay, a little bit. Good. Uh, they are uh, cool. And then also simultaneously to all this rock stuff, you have this vintage '80s like pop sound coming back. Which we hear like the 1975. Oh yeah, like yeah. The, the Night Game, um, John Mayer's new album kind of has a lot of that. Oh in dude, it. that just like screams Eric Clapton yeah. to me, like Eric Clapton in the 80s, mm-hmm. and it's it, like all got all got a very 80s vibe to it with the sounds, the mix, the everything, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I enjoy all that as well. Chorus on your leads, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's gated, south, yeah. gated snare reverb. <laughs> Which I dude, I love a good gated snare. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Um, it's hard to do well though. But uh, the night game has a really good the, their song. Um, I think it's called the outfield. Yeah, yeah, really good snare sound. Really good band too. Yes, also. Uh, is that what they're called? Yeah, the outfield. What's the song? Josie, uh, your love. Yeah, yeah. We played that. I the just want to use your love. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Uh, not the LA maybe different thing. <laughs> The only maybe didn't play that song. Um, I said um a lot, man. Jeez, I got to stop that. I'll just sit quietly and sip my drink for a second. Everyone okay. hang tight. Well, I'll just talk to you guys, the viewers. Um, let's see. Uh, so some other bands, and I just said uh, again. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I need to take a public speaking class. I think you just. I think you just. You know, if you already start doing it, you just do it a ton. I'm usually not bad about it. Now that I said that, there'll be a super cut of me doing it, but. <laughs> <laughs> But it's also, you know, probably what, 11? It's pretty much almost 11 o'clock at night. You it's know, late. Full day. Yeah. So It's late. We got yeah. up early. We went hard. We've had meetings and work and stuff, all sorts of stuff going on. 
But we're here for you guys. Now, I was saying, uh, what is going on here? Well, I'll just put it back to me. I'm yeah, just maybe just stay on you the rest of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, you just, I'm just going to get up and leave. You just- so we're kind of getting into like the, the, the kind of lead up to the Greta Van Fleet, you know, some of the bands that right. were... Um- another one, another big one, Dirty Honey. And oh, I yeah. remember how they, I discovered them too. My friend, uh, my friend Matt, who I was doing a podcast with at the time, he knows the kind of music I like. He likes a lot of similar music. And he texted me, this was probably 2019 or 18, whenever uh, their first EP came out. And he texted me like, hey, check out this band Dirty Honey. That's all he texted me. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, whatever. Looked him up. First song. Came in. And, the, and da da do do da It was when I'm gone. And then I just heard the snare. And I, the drums immediately were what sold me. I was like, God, that drum sounds massive. And then the singer comes in. Mark sings the first line. And I'm just like, I'm in. I'm, I'm 100% in. These guys are great. Yeah. And I feel like a lot, that's happened with a lot of people with them. He has that really good kind of, um, uh, that like kind of steven tyler steven tyler yeah aerosmith, they're, they're yeah. very aerosmith yeah people call us like acdc guns and roses if that's us then they're aerosmith and if greta van fleet zeppelin dirty van fleet or dirty van fleet dirty van fleet <laughs> dirty honey is definitely that kind of aerosmith vibe they even did aerosmith cover they just have so the new cover band that we're doing dirty van fleet come see us we'll them be doing dirty van fleets <laughs> we have a uh there's something there's there's a trend in our genre that we talk about from time to time a lot of the bands have one of four words in their name. Can you guess any of the four words? Me. Them. Them. Dirty. Dirty. Roses. Roses and? Oh, fuck. Not fuck. It's damn. Damn. Okay, yeah. Them, dirty, damn, roses. Those four words. So many bands in our genre have those words in them. One band has all three, <laughs> or three of them, and it's one of my favorite bands, Them Dirty Roses. Them Dirty Roses. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Where are they from again? Uh, they're from Alabama. They're from Alabama. At least right. uh, I think that's what I read. I don't know no, if that's No, I think correct. it was Georgia. I think you had said Georgia. No, it was Alabama for sure. Alabama. Okay. I just learned it today. <laughs> okay. Because I've been wondering forever, because they sing about the South and being Southern, and they have a lot more country to them than, uh, than we or some of the other bands do. But Them Dirty Roses, man, they're one of my favorite acts that I've heard lately. And um, yeah, they've got some good stuff. You they've been on a streak of releasing singles and stuff. And one of the singles they released is called Ain't No Need. And that's one of my favorite songs I've heard in our genre, period, across the board. It's just like really, really good. It um, speaks to me. I like it. Yeah. So if you're taking notes, Ain't No Need by Them Dirty Roses. Yes. God, I hope I'm saying that right. It's Them Dirty Roses, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but then there's also like... Not the, Dirty Them Roses? The Damn Truth. There's... um. There's Dirty Damn Tricks, our album. That's our album. Two of the, two of the four, but it's an album title. Doesn't, yes, doesn't not fully a band count. Name. Yeah. Still bugs me. Still don't like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That kind of... Yeah. I wish it was different now. Because <laughs> that, that was before we knew about the trend. At we least the music speaks for itself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It, we, we did feel passionate that we wanted an album name. I love albums that have names. Not self-titled, not named after a song on the album. An original name for the album, you know? And I would like that... Formally, right now, I'm 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 requesting that the should have just always named it have that original name for the album. Original name for the album. dot <laughs> net. No, that's the name of the album. <laughs> the name of the album is albumart.jpg. <laughs> or you just named the album self-titled album. So. <laughs> that's really meta. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, um, it, there's it uh, I'm trying to think of these other bands. The first band I heard with them and the name was Them Crooked Vultures. You remember them, right? That was uh. Not really. Let me get this right. Josh Hom, or Hami, however you say his name, from Queens of the Stone Age. Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters, obviously. And uh, uh, John Paul Jones from Zeppelin. It was the three of them. Oh. Yeah. I think I got that right. Uh, they put out an album, Supergroup. Them Crooked Vultures. First time I heard them in a, in a band name. Not saying it was the first band, but the first one I heard. I mean, I feel like I've heard that name. That was a while ago, though, dude. That was probably like 2010, 2009, something like that. Just guessing. I have no idea. Please drop a line. Um, and you know what? Hit us in the comments with other bands you know with one of the big four. Yeah, that'd be a great comment off. We've just load them up with, yeah. By the way, not saying that's bad if you're in a band with one of those four names. It's just a trend we've noticed. Yeah, it is a trend. Definitely. Um, damn. A lot of thes too, but that's kind of always been the case. You know? Like the... Yeah, LA maybe yeah. the damn truth, Definitely. whatever. The lonely ones. Uh, what about Magnolia Bayou? 
Magnolia Bayou. They're really cool. I love they're 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 rock, but swamp they're more rock. swampy and southern. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're from uh, Mississippi. In a lot of ways I I I consider them our sister band cuz we're we have um we're so close. We're so closely related in a lot of ways like personally. Mhm. Um not musically, not saying we sound similar or anything like that. But yeah, personally definitely. Oh, is that me? Yeah, that's oh. you. What's going on here? Oh my! So Dallas is uh, reconnecting. Oh, I know why. Uh, when I put it in low battery mode, it turns my display off. Oh, gotcha. Okay, we're good now. You're coming yeah. back any second. All right, so our sister band, <laughs> right? Because our our agent, the agent we work with primarily, uh, works very closely with that band. We're probably the two bands he works the closest with. Should be. Go. All right, and um, uh, that's what kind of what connects us. I think. Yeah. Even though we actually have not met the guys yet. <laughs> yeah, but like... <laughs> they haven't met like us, we, we haven't met them. Like the conversations, oh yeah, they crash with us when they come through, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You yeah. know, like... Same, yeah. You know, and I can't wait to meet them as well in person. Um, It'll be kind of weird, like, you know, I heard so much about you, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Oh, same, you know. Yeah. And like, try not to say it. Like, Well, it's obviously not going to come away in like a starstruck. I, I admire their, their, their work and mm-hmm. I like it. I appreciate it. Yeah, same. It's like, oh, I know so much about you. Are yeah. you a super fan? Get away from that. Yeah. No, dude, not like that, bro. <laughs> also like that, though. Come here. <laughs> do you sign this? <laughs> that would be really funny to do. <laughs> They're going to watch this and be like, we don't, we don't want to meet them. Yeah, we don't want <laughs> to fuck these guys. <laughs> we'll stay in a hotel. We're fine. <laughs> you can sleep right here on this table, my guy. My gay. Get a little blanket, little pillow. Use the keyboard for your pillow. Ooh, not this one, though. This is a nice one. Don't, don't touch my You can keyboard. use my cheap. Dell one, yeah. <laughs> I love my Dell though. Oh yeah, clicking yeah. clacking away. Just yeah, click. You feel like a hacker clacking. when you're just typing your name. <laughs> yeah, you're, t- you're trying to open Microsoft Word, but you feel like a hacker. Yeah, I, mean, I always feel like a hacker mixing in Cubase. You know. Oh, we're good. You staring it was, at phone. It, it was warning me of something. I was just making sure it wouldn't go to sleep on you again. <laughs> just black me out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that. That'd be funny. Just, just like well, that's funny because, uh, <laughs> as you can tell, it's a very DIY project here. Let's talk about this uh, this table candy you got. Oh, table candy, yeah. All right. So for uh, those of you out there, you know I love bringing table candy to the table. <clears throat> Wait, why is it called that? Table candy? Yeah. Uh, because it's uh, a play on words. It's not actually candy, and I'm fucking with you guys. Uh, you can't eat Wait, this. Wait, but why the table part? Um, oh. It's, well, now it's hand candy. Hand candy. <laughs> yeah. That's a good band name, dude. <laughs> hand candy? <laughs> yes, that's going in the phone. We cannot forget that one. By the yeah. way, we also have a running list of amazing band names, uh, both serious and hilarious. So, hand actually, candy. Actually, um, let me see. No, you can stay on you. Oh, okay. Looking through yeah, here. yeah. All right. So, uh. I'm going to add that though. This looks like a soul food. And yes, it still has the soul food circuit in it. But this was. Uh, well, and uh, d- go back a little bit. Describe what, what it is to the listeners only. To the listeners only, yes. This is a pedal. Okay. This is an electro harmonic soul food. But what JHS has done is they took this and they modified it. They put a dip switch in on the side. It sw- has three switches. And then they also put an extra knob in. And so your normal soul food, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like a Klon style pedal. It's got a volume, a drive, and a treble. Um, what JHS did with that switch is they gave you two different types of Klon drives as well as the soul food. And the one, the top setting, it's like a really good, really true like Klon circuit. And I love it. I love the sound of it. And then this, they call it the meat and three. So you have your three different clon sounds and then you have some meat here so this is some low end so you can add in some 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 bass to your uh to your sound which is not found on many clon style pedals so interesting i appreciate you taking us down that uh that rabbit hole oh it was a rabbit this got two rabbit holes on it three if you count the power jack yeah can we talk about the band name list we can i've got it here Oh, oh snap. So I just added hand candy. Can you give me a guess as to what number you think that was? 137. 160. Okay. So we have 160 band names here. <laughs> it just says band name list. 
and uh, some of them are, are 69 has to be reserved 169 has to be reserved right, do you want to see what number 69 amazing. let's see what yeah we gotta see this <laughs> legalize life <laughs> <laughs> we should say um, most of these are meant to be funny not real like you say something like hand candy and then one of us in the group will be oh bad name bad name and we like all just laugh you know it's just fun um, some of them are completely unrepeatable on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> You'll be filtering in live time, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like hopefully the brain to the mouth connections, like really, really good. Here. I won't read all of them, but um, and then some of them are just you know, uh, some of them are actually legit. Dirty damn tricks was on here. Yeah. Um, there was some, there was several on here. The LA maybe was a was originally on this list, but that was years ago. Because uh, we named the band in 2016, I think, and it was we've told this a million times, but we named it the LA Maybes, and then Foz, was, our drummer, was just like, yeah, just drop the S. So we did that. Uh, oh, and for those of you listening out there, it's not because we want to get to L.A. eventually. I've heard that a lot. Isn't that right? Weird? Yeah. I heard I was in the Chicago airport, O'Hare, and I, I've told this a million times, but I overheard someone, I guess, behind me say, like, yeah, she gave me the old L.A. maybe. And I, I just, that immediately hit me like, that's a fucking good saying, dude. I like that. Because I immediately knew what he was saying. Like, the L.A., you know, typical L.A. folk, kind of flaky, like. Yeah, I'll do it. And then in parentheses in their mind, unless something better comes up. Like, <laughs> like, you know, it's the LA maybe, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and I just love that. So uh, I, I texted the guys right there. I was sitting in O'Hare. Texted the band chat, and that's where we had the whole drop the S conversation. Uh, Dirty Damn Tricks is number 35 on this list. Oh, nice. And that came from Foz was hanging out with his friend. And his friend's not is not an ACDC fan, doesn't like him at all. And um he was he was kind of trying to be funny, like making fun of them. Like I just don't like them, man. They just whoa, they have their dirty damn tricks and shit. Like what? <laughs> Foz just loved That's that, amazing. so he texted he That's texted amazing. the list. So it's kind of like a like a little uh, a fun thing there. Let's see, uh, fangirl panic attack. <laughs> That's number two on the list. That's number two. That's an old one. Uh, let's see here. All right, so we just added hard candy. That was number one sixty. One of my favorite parts, or hand candy. Sorry, hard candy also good. <laughs> We um <laughs> definitely insinuating hard hand something. Candy. Yeah. Hard <laughs> hand candy. <laughs> but uh one of my favorite things is when I come up with a band name or when I hear one or when you send me one or something. Um I love adding it and then seeing what the one before it was. It yeah, always right? makes me laugh. Right? That's always a treat. So number one fifty nine, and I don't remember the story behind this one. Charm and the Shady Bandits. <laughs> Charm and the Shady Bandits. <laughs> Oh man, you know what I thought it would always be like, you know how there'd be a front man and it had his name, yeah, yeah. and then like Huey the, Lewis and the News, and yeah. exactly asparagus and the funky peas. <laughs> well, that's what charm of the shady bandits is. <laughs> I have um a few of those, Dick Lightning and the Boner Jams. <laughs> yeah, I think that was you and me. That was me. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Johnny Pipes and the Four Timers. <laughs> Please. Can we start calling so anyone we think that sings good? Johnny Pipes. <laughs> well, damn, Johnny Pipes. I didn't know oh, you could look sing. At, look at fucking Johnny Pipes over here. Thinks he can sing. Oh, shit. I'm just doing all the ones following that format. Uh, Lucius Clay and the Swamp Boys. <laughs> Boys, of course, with a Z. Yeah, right. This one was uh, this one was actually from. Oh, <laughs> there's two here. This one was actually from a uh, a YouTube video from the uh, pad lip reading guys. I just added it because I thought it was funny. Jimmy Toucan and the flip out. <laughs> Jimmy Toucan and the flip out. <laughs> the flip out's kind of cool though, right? Yeah, man. All right, and then this is clearly just nothing. Fuckboy McJones and the Dick Squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food truck sushi. <laughs> Any, anytime that you, sounds like parasites and death. Anytime you can get a dot 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 dot, those always work as a band name. The syllable just dot 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 dot. Food truck sushi. <laughs> uh, okay, but the one before Charm and the Shady Bandits, Big Wet Bull. <laughs> Big Wet Bull. <laughs> I just love how like dot I'm dot like, dot. I'm going. I'm going. Who comes up with the shit? Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, give me a number. <laughs> I feel like I feel like ninety nine was a good one. I I can't remember. See, this was like semi legit, faster than suicide. Oh, okay. I don't know what we meant by that. The one below, it's kind of cool. Battle mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I don't know what it means, but I like it. 
<laughs> Jet another, music. <laughs> another one I really like that I don't know anything about uh, what it means is uh, ragdoll physics. Ragdoll no, physics. Ragdolls just kind of yep. float around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pseudo suicide. Teenage grandparents. <laughs> Teenage grandparents. <laughs> My, this is a great one. Motorcycle book club. <laughs> Oh, we're dumb. Give me a couple more numbers and we'll be done. Homeless ghost. Homeless ghost. <laughs> Does a ghost have a home anyway? Yeah, yeah right. Uh, let's see. 88. 88. Nice, dude. <laughs> Full-time ogre. <laughs> That's another dot, 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 dot. Full-time ogre. <laughs> The one below that, uh, two two above that, ginger ninja. <laughs> ginger ninja. Just because the, the the like the phrasing of like what your mouth has to do to make the ginger ninja is yeah. just I love it. Yeah. Oh man. All right, one last one, maybe. Yeah, let's do one more. Give me give me something in the hundreds. Oh, uh, one twenty seven. That's Johnny Pipes and the four timers. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay, a different one then. Um, so one thirty five. The taco the, boxes. The taco boxes. <laughs> Oh man, these are fun. Anyway, Blood Uncle is uh, is is the uh, is Afghanistan Banana Stand anywhere? Yes, that, that one? one's absolutely on here. That is number it should be on here. Oh, did I not write it down? That was my favorite one ever. Afghanistan, yeah, and that's add, courtesy of, be... that's courtesy of Mr. Mikey Marrero yes. right there. Yeah, yes, yeah, he's badass guitarist. Did you get them? Did Charlotte. you get them and, and and that friend group doing doing this as well? No, or were they already um, doing it? I I was. I kind of egged it on like I'd just start texting random band names that were hilarious. Right. And then eventually, you know, I can't Mikey, believe I didn't Mikey like started really going back and forth with me. Fred did a little bit, but Mikey definitely did. I have uh, the Squirtles, which is a Pokemon themed Beatles tribute. <laughs> the Squirtles. Dude, I got called. I got. OK, so I have this student who's stopping lessons, but uh, he totally got really mad in one of our lessons. And. uh so he just got up from the couch, goes over, or no, so, all right, so here's the sequence. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm messing this up. Let's start at the top. Let's start at the top. <clears throat> you were born. I was born in, in Pasadena. Right. No, not in Pasadena. You weren't? Oh, no. where were you born again? I was born in the middle of nowhere. Victorville. Oh, yeah, you said in the desert. I That's does. right. That's yeah, right. so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Skip a little bit, and then. Skip a little bit, and that brings us to. <laughs> some shit happened. Yeah, some shit happened. <laughs> Parents got divorced, really screwed up everything, and then, um, and then I found myself on a couch at a too real. Yeah, yeah. Well, not on a couch. Like, let's we'll back up. Yeah, yeah. On Maybe. a separate couch, the student was on the on other a couch. separate couch. Yeah. I wasn't laying. I was sitting with a guitar. Like, there was a guitar on my lap. So it's not a casting couch situation at all. So, anyways, he gets frustrated. He did not want to play. Like, I'm trying to just get him to like just play like anything. Yeah. And he's just like sitting there like talking about video games, blah blah blah. And, By the way, if I'm just interrupt like, will you quick, please? Yes. You have the craziest student stories. I do. Continue. I do. And so I was just like, will, will you please? Because because I I stick around, right? And so like a lot of teachers would have left like these families already. But I'm just oh, like, I see what you're saying. Like just like dropped them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, no, I do the same. I stick around. Yeah. So I took for a while, unless yeah. it's real bad, and then yeah, I'm not. Yeah. So anyways, uh, he said, I'm gonna murder you with a Nerf gun. Oh, that's kind of cool. Gets up from the couch, goes to the closet near Wait, the how living old room. Is this kid? He's like nine. Oh, that's 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 normal nine. Maybe nine ten. Year old. Yeah. Okay, so he gets it, cocks it, comes up to me and holds it just like right in between my eyes, like oh, right here. That's ballsy. <clears throat> and I look at him, I said, I dare you to pull that trigger. <laughs> And he smiles, he gets that smile, and his finger's on the trigger, and he's just like, <laughs> that's uh, a bad idea in the really face, dude, that's, that's not a good idea. Like, dude, he stood there for like a minute. It's too long. And, uh, and then he called stopped. trigger panic, right? But uh, he said if I was a park Pokemon, I'd be Snorlax. Oh. <laughs> so you brought up that Pokemon, and I was like, oh, that's, that's right, I have this crazy <laughs> student story. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. You have a lot of crazy student stories that I guess we probably shouldn't tell. But... Um, how about the Missouri Love Company? Oh, that sounds good. Oh, that's wild. Satanic Panic. Satanic Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, we're not getting enough souls right now. That Jesus movement's really doing us. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a great one that makes no sense. Mr. The Frog. <laughs> Someone listening is just like, these guys are just saying silly shit and then laughing and then repeat. <laughs> like, Mr. The Frog. All right, number, number 108, you ready? Yes. Fuck hour. 
Not happy hour. Fuck hour. Could you imagine just a big banner that says fuck hour? Dude, that that is rigor, that is rigor mortis tortoise. Yes. <laughs> Some of these, there's like a moment where I see like, okay, Driz was involved from this point on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of them is just simply fuck Saturn. <laughs> That's a yep, very specific that, that, thing to be angry about. That was one. What is fist carrot? Fist carrot. <laughs> Seven years of blood. I love this one. <laughs> Confucius say go. <laughs> Maybe that one's borderline. Maybe we <laughs> cacophony of cockin of I can't even say it. Cacophony, cacophony of coffins. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we were in Foz's living room when when that yep. one came out. And then right yeah. after that, we came up with the same one at that moment. Bad covers till midnight. <laughs> Pockets and panty lines. These are good. So good. Uh, this is gold. <laughs> Hemp victory. Hemp <laughs> victory. By the way, um, you know, if you guys know anyone who uh, is trying to name their band currently, tell them Just to watch this episode. Send us an email, man. I got 160 names you're going you're gonna to want. Yeah. You're going to really want leftover oh, they're, cock. They're hot. <laughs> leftover <laughs> cock. That's what I'm... <laughs> you're going to really... You're going to really want... <laughs> you're going to really want Thor's hammered. <laughs> Yeah. Leftover cock. It's like sloppy seconds is usually a vagina term. <laughs> Leftover cock. Oh shit. 90 seconds in the microwave, you're back in business. <laughs> what about uh I- idle threats of violence? <laughs> what does that mean? The rabid rabbits. Dude, some of these are good. <laughs> Sadistic statistics. <laughs> Sadistic st- that's a can't even say, can't it. Even say it right now, dude. Ring pop mob. <laughs> we got to stop. All right, all right. We had an episode uh, of the old podcast. You remember where we went through some of these? We didn't have as many. Yeah. It was the same. We were just laughing our asses off. Oh, dude. It's, it's amazing. <sighs> Man. You know, and if you're ever down in life, you know, you can watch this episode and uh, really just smile. Smile. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to be it for. Oh, the no. regular listeners. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. For the regular listeners. Definitely. Now it's time to move on to our favorite segment. VIP time. VIP time. We need like a drop or something. VIP time. VIP time. VIP time. <laughs> we just keep trying to harmonize with each other. All right. Ah. Goodbye, normal plain folk. See ya. Thank you so much for watching. It's VIP time. Here we go. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the latest episode of your new favorite band. This is the end of the free content. But if you want to unlock the full uncut versions of every episode, head over to lamaybe.com slash VIP and sign up for our membership. For $7 a month, you'll get extended episodes of our podcast, a bonus episode every month, plus exclusive merch. You'll also be supporting us and helping us continue to stay on the road and make new music. And for that, we're eternally grateful. So thank you.